Vandiyathevan quickly walked towards the place where the prince and Nandini were standing. By the time he reached that place, he had a little doubt. Is she Nandini? There is nothing to adorn the clothes of the Queen of Pavur. Isn't she dressed like a sannyasini? The face looks like Nandini's face. But there is a difference. What is that? When Vandiyathevan went to where they were standing, the woman moved and disappeared in the shadows of the houses on the side of the road. Vandiyathevan excitedly watched her continue. The prince stopped him by holding his hand. Sir! Who is that woman? It looked like a face. He said. Alvar Kadayan, who arrived there in the meantime, said, that woman must be the clan deity of Kulanad. Look at that! If we had not moved at that time, we would have reached the Sharanas of Lord Buddha by this time. They looked at the place Tirumala had indicated. There, where the top of the building had collapsed, was like a small hill. Even a small elephant would have been crushed and killed by the dune. Are we the only three little people? It was at an auspicious time that our family deity appeared and called us by clapping his hands, said Pawnee's Selver. Prince! Who did you say that woman was? Vandiyathevan asked in surprise. Who did you think you were? Why did you bother to follow her? Asked the prince. This Vaishnava said, isn't it the clan deity of the Chillas, it seemed to me like an angel who had come to harm the Chillas. So, who do you think it is? Am I delusional or what? It seems that Palyavatarayar is Nandini Devi who is married as the youngest. Don't you both feel that way? Vandiyathevan said. I didn't see well. But it must be your delusion. How could the Queen of Pallavas come here? All Workadians said. What he says is not all delusion. The delusion of the eye is also included in it. Even I sometimes think that there is such a wondrous facial resemblance. Come. Let's walk and talk. Said the prince. Instead of walking by the side of the road in the shadows of the houses, the three now started walking in the middle of the street in the moonlight. After a while, Prince. What did that mother say when she called them? All Workadian asked. They told me that two enemies had come looking for me. They were looking forward to killing me. Sinner. Maybe you said that about us. Vandiyathevan asked startled. Pawnee Selver laughed and said. No, I didn't mean you. It doesn't matter if it's you. The goddess has told me that my life is too bad. She has saved me many times before. Said. Sir. I know who those two enemies are. They came with Parthipendra Palavar in search of them. Two figures were seen in the ruined mansion. It must be them. Said Thirumalai. Sir. Vaishnava. Why didn't you tell me this earlier? You go ahead. I'll go and search the ruined house. Vandiyathevan tried to return. The prince stopped him by the hand again and said, There's no hurry. We can't find them in that ruined house. We can see to it later. You must stay with me until I give further orders, you see? Who knows what danger still lurks in the nooks and crannies of this ruined city? Hiro Chikamani. Don't you believe I didn't bring anyone else for bodyguards? What am I going to do if you abandon me in the middle of nowhere like this? Said. These words made Vandiyadeva intoxicated. He embraced Nath and said, Sir. I will not leave you for a moment. He said. All Workadian said, I will not leave you. You are the protection of the prince, I am the protection of you. In no time, the trio reached the interior of Emperor Mahasna's dilapidated palace. A spacious room had a bed for three people on old-fashioned mattresses. All three lay down. Moonlight was peeking in through the slits of the computer on one side of the room. Hundreds of years ago, the emperors and princes of Sri Lanka and their matrices of Sri Lanka used to lie in this same place in this palace. Even then, the same moon rays would have peeped through this balcony. Now these moon rays would be disappointed to see ordinary people like us in the same place, wouldn't they, Vandiyathevara? Aromas Hivarmar said. 
sir. Say whatever you want about yourselves and this Vaishnava. Don't call me an ordinary man. Said Valavarayan. I forgot, I must forgive you. Are you not a royal prince born in a clan of nobles? Yes, sir, yes. This valiant Vaishnava would die of jealousy if he heard a poet sing about one of my ancestors. Let him go. Tirumala is a good Tamil lover. Like Nandavarman of the Pallava clan, he will not hesitate to give his life for a Tamil song. So let's hear the song. Hearing this, Pani Selvar said, Thirumalai, you are a Tamil poet. What is the meaning of this song, tell me? Said. Sir. It seems that you are testing me. Let me say this, at the gate of the palace of Mavandia Arvana, many princes were waiting for the king's darshan. They did not get darshan of Ilesil, because the Kavarayas who were Bavendras had already entered the palace. After hearing their song, the king of the sky was pleased. He sent them gifts. Pukakara umbrellas, he sent many kinds of gifts like ivory palanquins, pearl armors, jeweled ornaments, elephants, horses, etc. The small kings waiting at the Asura gate were filled with grief at the gifts and said, Oh! Is this not my umbrella? Is it not my palanquin? Is it not my elephant? Is it not my horse? These poor poets! They are taking it! They lamented. The things that those minor kings had brought as gifts to Mavandia Arvana were being sent as rewards to the poets by the Vana king. Prince! Is the meaning of the song right? Would you be wrong? Oh, what a wonderful song! What a graceful imagination! Who is the Mahakavi who sang this? O Vanara clan Tiluk! O Vandiyathava! It does not matter whether the kingdom of your forefathers was big or small. You who have received a song like this, what can be more special for them? Born in their clan, you deserve to sleep in this palace. What is Mahasna's bed? If only the bed on which Emperor Sakshad Dush Takamanu used to sleep is available, you can sleep in it. You are worthy of it. Yes, sir. Yes. I am qualified for anything. But who values merit in this day? Did those Pikhas give me the crown of this kingdom of Lanka? Did they give it to me when I could refuse it? Do you know what rage I felt then? I raised the crown on my head and myself. I looked to see if I could get away with it. I was just wondering if this valiant Vyashnavar would come to the match. On hearing this, Aromas Hivarman laughed out loud. Hearing the sound of that laughter Vandiyadeva's heart was happy. Showing more anger in the open, he asked, Is it all right if you laugh? What's the remedy for a wrong done? He said. Sir. Vinarkula Tiluk. I told you truth and dharma. Don't you think that these are valid reasons for refusing the throne? I already had some strength in truth and dharma. I have decided that I will no longer wake up in the face of them, and have nothing to do with them. Damn it! Why? Why did you make such a decision? Why are you angry with them? Didn't you say that you fell in love with the maiden of truth and righteousness? Didn't you say that you sacrificed the kingdom of Ilanxa for it? I don't even think about women who have fallen in love with someone else. Pawnee Selver laughed again. I've never seen someone as funny as you. Said. Yes, sir. They're having fun. I'm sick to my stomach. If they don't want the salon throne, I'll stand by and point at me and say, give it to him. Shouldn't you have said that? Vandiyathevan said. Aromas Hivarma laughed and rested and said, Lord Vandiyathava. Is it such a simple matter to accept the kingdom? It is not easy to give and accept it from Buddhist Pikhas. There is room for great mishaps later. Religious leaders must stand with religious matters. If religious leaders interfere in royal affairs, bad for religion and bad for the kingdom. And today they have come to give me the throne. Buddhist monks are not the leaders of all the Buddhists in this country. They are the leaders of a group. There are two other groups like theirs. If we concede the kingdom to them, we must rule the kingdom according to their wishes. 
the other two groups will immediately become our enemies. Said. Does Prince Valadu understand the situation in this place now? All Workadians said. Understood, understood. Understood that here too there are fools who fight over there whether Vishnu is greater or Shiva is greater. Vandiyathevan said. Don't start a fight here. It's late at night. I can hear the sound of people dispersing from the Parahara procession. Let's get some sleep, said the prince. I can't sleep. I can only sleep when I know who Amma is who saved us from being buried alive by knocking her hand in the middle of the street. I still don't know who she is either, but I'll tell you any news I know about her. Come and sit by me if you want to hear it, said the prince. 